today I will talk about a pretty sensitive subject that is on domestic abuse and just my story. So that's triggering to everybody, I'm sorry. But it's like when you think of domestic abuse, I mean, usually you picture you know, somebody who is, you know, bruised and bloodied and sometimes that's not always the case. Most of the time it does lead up to that point, but you know, there is a beginning stage. And there's five you know, main types of abuse, and that's physical, sexual, emotional, financial, and psychological. And then there's another one, and that's spiritual, or religious. Um, doesn't matter if you live in Spalding Lake or if you live in West Island, Buffalo. Uh, I personally know what domestic abuse looks like because I was in a, an emotionally, spiritually, and borderline physically abusive relationship for seven months. In the beginning, there were a lot of red flags I should have, you know, seen. Like, he would, if I didn't text him back fast enough, he would get extremely upset and accuse me of not loving him and not caring about him and that. And this was my first relationship, so I had no idea what I was doing at all. <laughs> I didn't know how a boyfriend was supposed to treat somebody. I, my dad was never really around growing up, so I didn't really know how a guy treats a girl. And it was two months into the relationship that we had our first humongous fight because I didn't invite him to an event that my friend invited me to. And he's like, well, you should have told me, you should have, you know, at least let me know. I'm like, stop, someone invited me to go somewhere. And we went to the same event the day prior, so he was being a baby. But he got extremely upset over that. And from that point on, all we did was fight. I mean, I was, not to sound cocky, I was a very good girlfriend. I loved, I gave him everything. I coddled him, I made sure, I constantly asked him if he was okay, to make sure he was doing okay. And four months into a relationship, we had another fight on the differences between men and women. Now, he believes that there's only physical differences, and obviously, I'm sure we can all agree, women are a little more emotional than men. And he accused me of saying that he was a girl and that he was too sensitive, and so we were sitting at my table, and I was looking up on the internet, like, scientific fact about it, and he snatched my computer away, and I like shut up and I yelled at him, to, like, don't take my computer away because I was so frustrated. And this was the first time I ever like yelled at him. And within seconds, he was in my face with this look of like, he wanted to slam me against the wall. And I'm pretty sure the only thing stopping him was my mom who literally shoved him away from me as I completely broke down. And he just looked at me like, as I was laying on the ground, he's like, whatever. And then he started crying because he felt bad. But I don't think he did. And then there was another time where we were in church. Thought a place you should be safe, but you're not. Um, and everything was fine. We were just sitting in church, and all of a sudden he got weird. Like, he got that look in his face, like something's wrong. And I'm like, oh, God. Not here, not right now. We can't have a fight. This can't escalate. So I tried to calm him down, and that didn't really work. And so he started rocking back and forth and grunting. And the only thing I can describe it as is he looked like a demon. He was completely, he wasn't there anymore. And so when he finally calmed down after he broke a pen in his hand, um, he said the reason was because my skirt came up a little too much, which by the way was longer than this one and it was an appropriate length. Um, yeah, he said that he had very visual images of me being raped, which then led to our next argument of him saying that it's a woman's fault if you're raped over the age of 10 and that you should fight to the death rather than <laughs> <laughs> rather than being raped and i'm like okay that's not that's not okay at all and yeah. <laughs> yeah and it was just like that until finally seven months later my mom's like you can't be in this relationship i was a minor i was 17 and 
he was 19, so he threatened if it didn't end, she would get like an order of protection against him, so we ended it. And then we got back together <laughs> six months later. Happy but, birthday? Well, actually, no, 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 actually it was a year later. We got, we got back together and he was very good at hiding at this time. And the week that we were, he was planning on proposing to me, a humongous argument happened. And I decided, th this is enough. I'm not going to continue to stay. That's why I made this poster. If y'all ever heard of like the No More campaign, I'm mm -hmm. sure some of you have. That's why I made the poster. And in conclusion, sometimes I kind of- see a poster? What? Can we see a poster? Uh, sometimes I would wish that he had physically abused me because the physical scars and the bruises would are so much easier to heal and I would have been taken so much more seriously. I was not believed. I had to leave my church because they didn't believe me and they all thought that he was this charismatic, great leader of the church and he was, and I couldn't stand to keep being there. 